Okay, one of my favourite accessories for the Kamado is the Jotisserie because you can make kebabs better than you've ever tasted from a kebab shop in your back garden and it really doesn't take very much at all. So basically we've got, I'm going to show you how to make some awesome chicken garnet today. Uh, we've got some chicken thighs, skinless and boneless chicken thighs. Uh, super cheap, really really tasty, very forgiving, they don't dry out in the same way that breast does. Uh, cheaper too. Uh, so all I'm going to do is hit those with a good, good load of salt. Some DJ Barbecue smoky Chipotle rub. Plenty of that in there. And then you do need to add, because the skin is where you get all the fat from the chicken, and obviously these are skinless, add in a good hit of some quality rapeseed oil. This stuff is the Wharf Valley cold pressed rapeseed oil, which is available in loads of different um, farm shops online as well. Really recommend it. It's locally grown in Yorkshire, no air miles, it's absolutely delicious. And this one is the garlic and rosemary, which is going to go perfectly with that chipotle flavour. So I'm going to give it a liberal hit of oil in there as well, probably, I don't know, 100 mils of oil. A lot of it's going to burn off, so don't worry too much about that. So just get your hands in there, make sure that all those flavours, the salt, the rub, all cover every last inch of the thighs. If it doesn't look like it's seasoned enough, then it probably isn't, so you can always add in a little extra. Can I get a little help for a little more, bit more uh, rub in here, guys? Somebody? Give us a shake. A little shake from high. Come on, yeah, go high, go high, baby. Oh, yes. Watch out, watch out, Ainsley. <laughs> okay, that smells awesome. It took me two minutes, as you've seen. So now, we've got this, uh, this is the rotisserie stick. You just take off the one end, and then this is kind of working upright, I'm just going to skewer one by one these fillets in the middle and I tend to crisscross them so you go one one way because they're kind of length, they've got a, a, like an oblong shape if you like so just crisscross them over backwards and forwards whoops all the way down until you've fully loaded the rotisserie uh, you can do lots of different flavours rubs as well, you don't, I mean, I've gone for this rub today not only because it's awesome, but it's also very simple, so it's, you know, if you haven't got much time, having rubs available is great. You can also make your own, you can go with sort of some Middle Eastern flavours, I mean, I like to use cumin, coriander, smoked paprika, garlic, chilli, whatever way you want to take it, you can do it. Or you can maybe do, do like chicken tikka and make a chicken tikka kebab. Okay, so that's fully loaded up. So now, what's on there? That looks very, very much like what you see going around in the kebab shop, only we know what's in this. I much prefer it. Okay, so that's just going to clamp down now on the top, screw it in, that holds all the meat in place. And then what you can do, once we, I'll show you in a moment, when we put it onto the rotisserie, we can just alter, slide this up and down so that it sits central. But it's good to do that once you get to the tomato. Go. So you'll see we've got the Kamado set up with the charcoal divider in and that means that when this goes around it's only going to be cooking for half the time. If you fill the whole thing with charcoal it's not going to get much relief and you end up burning the outside before the inside's cooked. So that's why we use this divider. And then all we need to do is just slide the rotisserie stick into the middle. And this is what I mean by just to make sure that this is central now. Just make some adjustments on like that to where you want it to be, clamp it down, turn it on, off we go, put the lid down, if you want it to you can put a little bit of um, oak or some cherry wood on there, just to give it a bit more smoky flavour, but you will find that using good quality charcoal you're going to get that nice sort of smoke flavour from that in. Lid down, cook it around about 200 and I'm guessing it'll take about 2 hours. Okay, so this, this has been in for about an hour and it's looking superb. So it's about halfway there. Just slightly takes a 
Another great thing about using the, uh, the charcoal divider is that I'm now going to be able to cook these peppers and onions in the other side. So literally, I'm just going to drop these right down into the fire, the fire basket. I'm just going to roast next to that fire. And these are going to become a dirty salsa that's going to go with this awesome chicken chowana. Okay, right, let me show you how to make some real quick and easy flatbreads to go along with the, uh, the chicken kebabs and the dirty veg. I'm going to take 500 grams of flour, roughly, which is a third of a bag, so if you just pinch it a third of the way up, dump it in, don't worry about me measuring stuff, this will still come out alright. Put that to one side. I'm going to make a little well in the middle. We're going to put in some baking powder, one sachet. There. And then a pinch of salt. Three heat, maybe four because it's a small spoon. Four spoons of yogurt. Just makes it super soft. Real good little trip. That was five. You know, who's counting? I just kind of think as long as it's sort of a cup's worth maybe in the middle, it'll be fine. And then we're just going to start working the flour and the yogurt together, bringing it in to thicken. And it'll almost become like lumpy. And it's important to, if you push the flour through the um, yoghurt first, before you add any water, it helps you to get a better idea of how much water you're going to need. If you put the water in to begin with, the yoghurt actually makes it a lot softer than you might think. So, there we go. Right, now we're going to just add, bit by bit, water. I always say, you can always add a bit more, you can't take it out. So, add a bit in, work it in, and when it starts to sort of, make big clumps, then that's when we're nearly there. So when we're at like this kind of consistency, that is sort of starting to come together, that is the point where you're going to get your hands dirty, suck up the spoon, get in there, get right underneath it, get all the dry stuff, and just work it in. And you're going to just work that, knead it into a really, you'll feel the, what the yoghurt does is make it so soft, it makes really incredibly fluffy flatbreads. So I'm just working that now into the bowl, using my knuckles to knead as I go. Just stretching the dough, stretching the, uh, the fibres in the gluten to make it nice and soft. And then, so that's all the flour is now incorporated into that. So I'm just going to finish it with a little bit, a tiny bit of flour on the board. You only really want to add more flour if it starts to stick to your hands. It's not, which is not at the moment, you don't need more flour. So just work it on the spot for a couple of minutes until it's really stretchy. You make this dough the night before, leave it in the fridge, and it's ready to roll the next day. Right, that'll benefit from a rest of around about half an hour. Wrap it in some cling film so it doesn't dry out. And that's it. Okay, so this is rest for half an hour. So what we're going to do now is just take a sort of tennis ball, a bit smaller than a tennis ball, a bit bigger than a golf ball size piece, that's very precise, a bit more flour in the board, and literally just roll it out. So start with, if you start with something round, you're going to end up with something, well you've got more chance of ending up with something that's round. Start with a strange shape, you're going to end up with a strange shape. Just roll backwards and forwards, flipping it over. And it nice and thin because that raisin agent, that baking powder, is going to make it fluffy anyway. You don't want a big thick flatbread. We'll take the grill, directly over coals, lid down, get working on the next one. That's probably going to take about a minute. Let's have a little look. We've just started to see some bubbles rising, it's not quite there yet. We're going to just open the vents up, just get it a little bit hotter. 30 seconds, roll in this one. That's good to turn. Now just give it a little flip over. We'll finish on the other side. Some flames coming up now. You can leave the lid open if you like. And you'll start to see the bubbles coming up. And that's it. Black bread. And repeat until you've got enough for however many people you're feeding. Okay, I just had a little sneaky peek and this is ready. So we're just gonna get these veggies that we dropped in the bottom here out 
Make sure you want to do with those as a little side. And then all we need to do is just lift this out and let it rest whilst we sort out the vegetables that are going to go with the flatbread. It's so good. So I'm just going to show you what to do now with these vegetables that we put into the bottom of the tomato. They're really, really soft and they look, people will just think they're knackered, but actually inside you've got the most insane caramelised onion. Look at that, just squeezing it out. Just going to make an incredible little salsa. Just pop in all these onions, add their skins, get rid of them. Yeah, so we just look at the heart of that. It's gorgeous. One of my favourite things to do with onions is just put them in coals. In their, in their jackets, pop them out. Insane flavour. Just intensify all the sugars in them. They're so sweet and delicious. It's incredible. Okay, so I've got my onions out of the skins. Now we've just got the peppers. Just going to peel off the outside of those as well. Doesn't matter if you leave a little bit on there, but it's a little bit kind of. Um, can be a little bit tough sometimes. You're just left with this gorgeous roasted pepper underneath it. It's almost going to mush this. It's just exactly what we want. It's just going to be like a real, almost like a sauce. We're not going to put any mayonnaise on these kebabs. This is going to be what we're going to season it with. So now we've just got all of these onions and peppers together. And literally, what I'm going to do is just chop it up. And just keep scraping it in. Chopping it up. Add some garlic to it if you wanted. I'm not going to today. Into a bowl. Like so. And then we're going to add in some last minute additions of a bit of chilli, some heat. I'm going to take the seeds out. And then just, you don't want massive chunks of chilli in there, so just Take a little bit of time to dice that up finely. Oops, just a bit. Fresh coriander. Bags of coriander, I love this stuff. Some people love it, some people hate it. But it just absolutely brings the salsa alive. I don't think you can make a salsa without it, personally. You always want a nice balance of sweet, salt, sour, heat. Sweet is gonna come from those peppers and those onions because, as I said before, the uh, cooking them in the coals means all of that liquid's gone and just intensifies the natural sugar, so you don't need to add any sweet. So we're gonna add a little bit of acidity with some red wine vinegar, about a tablespoon, some salt, and some rapeseed oil. Okay, and then just mix it all together. We've got the most beautiful charcoal cooked, dirty, smoky, veggie salsa to go on those kebabs and those flatbreads. All that's left to do is to carve this amazing chicken shawarma, however you say it, I can say that word. Slide down to the bottom there, and then get rid of that away. And then we're just going to carve, so you get some nuggets of crunch, crunchy bits on the outside, but then in the middle, you will see it's super juicy. And that's because we've used thigh meat, the thigh so, so forgiving. You could leave this to overcook for a little while and you, you get away with it, you know, which you wouldn't be breast. You can see inside there, it's just like chicken meat in a kebab shop. And like I said before, we know exactly what's gone into this one. Then all it takes now, steak and flatbread. Excuse hands, but well, I'm going to eat it so I don't mind. Load it with some of that meat, and then finish big dollop. Dirty veg salsa. Chicken shawarma. Get it down Thanks for watching our Yorkshire Fire cooking demos. If you like what you've seen, please go to the channel and subscribe. You'll see the next videos coming soon.